Hey, what is up everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video with your host Ken Kukin and today we're gonna talk about the last video I came out with with Destiny 2. Now the last video I came out with I was playing comp, I got DDoS, I was really pissed off in my feelings but my point still stands and there's a problem with Destiny and its future. The problem has been apparent in Destiny 1, it's apparent in Destiny 2 and it's growing and I'm gonna over the next over the next few videos who knows handful several I don't know however many videos I'm gonna put out on the topic on the subject I'm gonna talk about how destiny's future is the direction it's going and how I think that it's kinda bad for it so I'm gonna in this video I'm gonna talk about the definition of skill and I'm gonna focus on comp competitive this is going to cover the competitive part a little bit and we're going to cover a little bit of what skill is in a game and then a bit on the matchmaking now bear with me so and we will also cover pve stuff at a later time so first the definition the definition of skill skill you know i'm not going to go read it off a dictionary or online but skill is a skill is something that you have picked up and honed that you're good at you put a lot of time into now when it comes to video games you know you're skillful at the game that means you're good at the game in some shape form or fashion I think there are two definitions of skill so there is skill as in you're just good at playing the game and then there is intelligence where you're smart at playing a game now you can have both you can have neither or you can have one without the other so, for instance, you can be really good at the game and still lose to someone that outplays you with a smarter play. But they could be less skilled than you and still win. Or they could lose. Your skill could just be that much greater than a smarter player's play because that's just what's going to happen. It just happened to be that way. You're skilled for that. Now, those are the two definitions I take when I think those are the two definitions I think about when it comes to skill in Destiny 2. Now Destiny 2 has done something that a lot of other games are doing now since they introduced the looter shooter. In Destiny 1, briefly, we'll talk about it, random rolls. Random rolls kinda took the skill factor out of the game. It's a little less skillful to play and it's a little more RNG and as time has progressed Destiny has gone from random rolls to no random rolls to random rolls and right now in Destiny 2's current form it is the most RNG I have ever seen in Destiny 2 and it doesn't seem to be stopping so for me an unpopular opinion I enjoyed Destiny 2 vanilla when it came out I thought it was great there wasn't random rolls, but there were plenty of guns to choose from, and we kind of fell into a, uh, there wasn't shotguns at the time, so we kind of fell into a, a weird meta that people didn't like. You couldn't use shotguns, couldn't use snipers, uh, I think fusions were a no-go, it was just primaries. You had auto rifles, scout rifles, hand cannons, submachine guns, sidearms. I think those were the five primaries you could choose from not that great there wasn't an exotic like the chaperone at the time that could be put into a primary slot or the icebreaker you know nothing that gave you ammo the the invective shotgun wasn't a thing so you had to work to get your heavy so people you know they kind of fell back into the part where in Destiny 1, it was shotguns and hand cannons for a long time. It was, uh, I think it started off with auto rifles in the beginning. Those got nerfed. And then it kind of solidified as in shotguns, hand cannons, and close range battles, and snipers. There was a lot of sniping too. In Destiny 2, not so much sniping. I don't, sniping's not the same. So there's less people that snipe in the game, in my experience. So when Destiny 2 came out and people started flocking to SMGs, and sidearms it was again closed ranged combat they didn't have a shotgun to use because they had to get power ammo to use it so they went ahead well what's the next best thing i guess it's going to be another close range weapon so they still kind of fell into the close range so the meta's always kind of been close range 
ever since Destiny 2's come out, and I would venture a guess to say there was more shotgunners than snipers in Destiny 1. I don't know though. I don't know if that's true or how accurate that is. That's just my feeling. There were a lot of snipers, but I felt like there were more shotgunners than snipers. I didn't shotgun in D1. I sucked at it. I got decent in D2 with shotguns. Still kind of suck at it. But now it's come down to RNG. So again, I think Destiny 1's Destiny 2's vanilla, sorry, was more balanced. Now people say, well, that wasn't as fun because everyone's got the same weapon. But it gave people more opportunity in the competitive scene to actually show that they're more skilled at the game than the other players. In Trials, you won more based off skill rather than RNG. Now you'll have some people say here and there, no, that was all lucky. Some teams shouldn't have beat others because they weren't as skilled, but maybe they made the smarter play. And a lot of times that falls into the countdown category. People, I like countdown. I thought it was a great trials edition. Survival, I was very bad with it in the beginning. I like it a little bit more. And that's for the more skillful players. I think countdown is kind of kind of leans towards the more intellectual player, but you have to have the skill to back it up too. Like both game modes, you kind of have to have hand in hand. So there was a lot of times where people would say, well, the, the more skilled team lost in countdown. I disagree. If you lose in countdown at that particular time, the better team won. They made whatever play, whether they defused your bomb because you planted it and you ran away and they just snuck in there, you know, uh, whether they planted the bomb and you couldn't touch it. You could not defuse the bomb because they used whatever means necessary to plant the bomb. Uh, one thing I did in year one of Destiny 2, I played the Striker. I used to play the Warlock, Voidwalker in D1. In D2, I went to the Striker. They they changed the Warlock. I didn't like the way they changed it. And I played the Striker. I played the two grenades. And when I would plant, if it was my plant, I would plan for a grenade. It's like, all right, I probably need a grenade. Especially if it's going to be a 1v4, if my team dies and I'm away from them. And I would sometimes, some maps, I would split. I would go off by myself, and if I thought I could get a free plant off, I would plant the bomb. My team would either fall back to me, and if they couldn't make it to me, it's a 1v4. And at that point in time, I just have to make the best play I can. So grenades were there to lock down the bomb so no one can defuse it. The longer I stayed alive, the later I could throw the grenade on the bomb, the higher the chance it would explode and... I would win even if I died and they couldn't defuse the bomb I won the round some people would say well your team died your whole team died you should have lost that round no that's not how the game of that's the objective now I've seen other people lose rounds of countdown I've actually lost a round of countdown maybe more than once but not too many times where we were supposed to plant the bomb we didn't plant the bomb and we lost because that was our objective so I guess people don't like objective gameplay. They just want to go in there and team deathmatch everything. It's like, well, that's not what Destiny 2 is. That's not what Bungie decided for Destiny 2. So static roles. Guns had static roles. Everything was you were either good with the gun or you weren't. Then the other person that killed you, you were rocking a sidearm. If you were rocking the crimson and you killed someone that was rocking the crimson... There was less luck and more skill. It's not like today, there's Dust Rock Blues, right? It's probably the most used shotgun in the game. I have one. I don't have the best rolls on it. There are people that are shooting me from ranges they shouldn't do. Now, we're going to briefly talk about some of the changes that are coming to shotguns. The big change that's coming to shotguns, and I don't think it's a big change at all, is every shotgun's going to get a range nerf. The RNG's still there. Because I still have to have a shotgun that can actually reach that range. So if your shotgun has more range than mine, I'm still in the same position I was before the nerf. I'm going to get shot from a distance I probably shouldn't have gotten shot from. So, again, RNG doesn't help me. And I don't think that's very fun. Now, there are guns out there that people can't get. And there are roles out there that people do get and they're really good rolls for the gun, but they're still not that skilled and get outplayed. 
So it's not even helping the bad players to be good, other than they get a little lucky here and there. We'll bring up another really powerful weapon, which is um, the hand cannon, the not forgotten. You have to play competitive, you have to get the 5500, you have to get the legend rank, and you get this hand cannon. It's really hard to do it. A lot of people, I would say just as many people, I would say more people that have gotten it by themselves, right, on their own account. There's more people out there that are paying people to play the game for them on their account to get this fucking gun. All right. So, and now this gun has more range. It is like the Luna Sal. Now, the Luna Sal is pretty powerful. It can two tap people in some instances, it can three tap people uh, consistently. It's at a high rate of fire. It's very forgiving if you miss a shot. But everyone's Luna ha Luna's Howl is the same. But if you got someone that got the Not Forgotten, you l probably lose to RNG because it, that gun has more range. The most significant thing about that gun is it has more range. So it's easier for people to kill you versus a Not Forgotten versus a Luna's Howl. They're just going to win that gunfight most of the time. You, even if you get in range... You, now you're kind of in the same range, right? You get into your Luna Sal range, you kind of have a little more of a chance. Still, again, RNG. So, you gotta fight that. Again, you know, it, Destiny 2 has taken away the skill factor of the game. And those are just two big guns. There's a lot of guns out there. There's a Jotun out there. I think everyone can get the Jotun, but if you're not using the Jotun, you kind of... You know, you could get one shot from so many different directions, right? Uh, and it tracks. It has pretty aggressive tracking, too. So that kind of sucks for anyone that doesn't have that gun. There's other guns out there with just as much crazy RNG as the Jotun. There's certain rolls of fusion rifles that have really great range and recoil and can shoot really fast. Let's briefly talk about Gambit for a second. The Queen's Breaker... If is a is an exotic it is a linear fusion rifle it shoots a laser beam right like a sniper rifle and it has really high aim assist if that's pretty prevalent in gambit a lot of people use it i use it it's going to be nerfed soon i don't know how much of a nerf it's going to get and how effective it's going to be but i know it's going to get nerfed and i may or may not have to change how i play the heavy anymore in gambit so when that happens, I'm probably going to have to choose a different heavy. But again, it's just it's a prevalent weapon. If you don't have it, if you never got it, which it's a random exotic drop, sometimes you may never get it. Just like the Gallahorn in D1. Some people didn't get the Gallahorn until the very last weekend of Destiny, uh, of, of uh, before it got nerfed. That's right. It got nerfed, and some people didn't have it until the weekend before it got nerfed. They, they got to play with it for a weekend or a week. And then, boop, it got nerfed really bad. So it's just like, man, that kind of sucks. But that's the RNG. So there was RNG, and it just it keeps kind of getting worse and worse. And now, you have really powerful guns, and some supers, are I don't feel like, are as powerful as other supers. As you've seen a moment ago in the video clip, if you're paying attention to the clip, I killed a Spectral Blades. Now, he's relatively hard to kill. But he ran in a straight line at me. He didn't do anything fancy. And I just spammed my Luna's Howl. And shot him until he died. And then I shotgun him for the finish. So I got lucky there. There's a lot of guns out there that will one shot soup. Your, will one shot a player right out of their super. Now the super used to be the trump card of Destiny. That was its thing. When Destiny 1 came out. You had supers. You usually use supers to counter supers. And you could kill people with the shotgun. But a lot of people would snipe, and they would kill people with their snipe. So that was really good. That was a rewarded kill. You you got you landed a headshot, or you landed enough body shots on a target that's really hard to hit, probably fast moving. You were rewarded with that kill. That is cool. That's understandable. But it's kind of you know the the, the supers just haven't gotten to a point where. They're not as supery anymore. I don't feel very powerful in my super. I feel like, man, this gives me a slight edge, but by how much? Am I going to get outgunned by a Luna's Howl? Because I'm just, you know, there, getting shot to death by seven bullets? Or something like that? Do I get team shotted? 
or team shot it. Do I get team shot? Which kind of sucks, but I mean, I'd rather get team shot than just shot by a random Jotun, which uh, that's a fusion rifle that shoots out like a cannonball that tracks. One shots everything, one shots you out of your super, and if you're not in your super, you have less armor than ever before, so you're going to die anyway if it hits you. I've seen it just blast people away straight out of a res. It's really powerful. So, again, there's a lot of RNG in the game, and I think Destiny just kind of needs to back off from that. There's too much RNG. One more thing I want to bring up before I talk about uh, another point of comp is there, um, there used to be no radar. At one point in time in D2, competitive scene didn't have radar. And I think Trials was, a, was with that as well. They took radar out of Trials and comp and left it in quick play. Now, again, the unpopular opinion, I think that was the best thing Destiny did. Taking the radar out of comp. And when they took it out of comp, people were like, when they were talking about taking it out of comp, people were like, man, I don't want to sit around, you know, I don't want to deal with shotgunners camping in corners all day long. And I'm like, true, but they have to know you're coming to really get the edge on you. So now they have to listen for you, right? Now they have to hear you sh coming up on them. And that's very possible. It's very probable in this day and age. Everyone's got surround sound or you got your TV so loud that you're just going to hear people running up on you. Right? So that happens. But at the time, they had taken the radar out and it kind of opened up a new way to play. I, Even though guns had RNG, I felt like there was a bigger variety of guns out there. Now, let's say, at the time, I think Graviton was one of the big guns. It was a pulse rifle. They buffed it. It was really powerful. If you came face-to-face -face with a Graviton Lance pulse rifle and you weren't using a really strong gun, you may have lost that gunfight because at that point in time, it had nothing to do with the radar. It was just you two are in front of each other. You both see each other at the same time. Now it's who's more skilled at killing the enemy and who has a little more luck on their gun, right? So at that point in time, there goes the RNG again. But what if you didn't roll up on the enemy face to face? What if you could have walked up behind them and they never knew it? You were able to take a flank angle and they couldn't stop you or know about you unless they were looking that way. So now you get to shoot them in the back because well, everyone on the enemy team is looking one direction because they're looking one direction and they forget about their back. So now you have the radar that's gone. You lower the quality of RNG for a gun because they can't shoot you if they can't see you. And most people's reaction when they get shot in the back, they're going to run in a direction to not get shot. So they're not even going to turn to try and challenge you. They're just going to run away. And you may kill them before they get away because you already have the drop on them. Some pa some players' reaction times are that low. So again, I thought when they took the radar out, they opened up a new avenue for people to play. Now, there was a lot of people that were like, no, I want the radar back, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, why do you want the radar back? So I know where people are. I'm like, all right, fine. Well, they brought the radar back and that kind of, you know, that kind of brought RNG back into, uh, I was looking for, I was going to report that guy for playing bad. I, w I thought that was an option. I wasn't reporting that guy for any kind of weird nonsense, but, uh, I was like, damn, this dude sucked. Can I report him for playing bad? No. So, <laughs> um, so they took the radar out and then they brought it back and that kind of closed it off again. It was back to RNG rolls. Destiny dialed everything up to 11, and I quote, we dialed everything up to 11, supers up to 11, guns up to 11, like everything got buffed. Once the guns started getting buffed, they started buffing supers and making everything really powerful. Supers are still underwhelmed by guns, even non-exotic guns, which I think at that point, supers are like not... It's 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 not the it's not the niche that Destiny has anymore. It's like, well, we have supers in our game, so Call of Duty has supers, and some of them actually feel like they're pretty powerful, right? So to speak, they have their ultimate move or whatever they call it in Call of Duty. I I don't know. I just know that they're in there. Destiny 2 supers, you're not getting killed by exotics that are supposed to be unique and powerful, or if not. 
powerful because they're just that unique. It's there are other legendary guns out there, non exotics, that are killing the competition. So it's like, well, that kind of sucks. So it went back to RNG, and it's just kind of went up from there. They they've introduced gun after gun that is just it's pretty much more game breaking than the next one, and some of them are beyond barri- are behind barriers that you can't get. So it's a lot of RNG. Now, the Not Forgotten, that's fine. I don't mind the Not Forgotten being unattainable for me. If I try to solo queue all day long, I don't have it. Haven't gotten it yet. I do a lot of solo queuing. It's hard because I feel like I get a lot of teammates on my team that don't know what they're doing at my rank, and it kind of sucks. So, you know, that's pretty poopy for me. But... I don't mind the Not Forgotten being a gun. It's a pinnacle gun. You have to work hard to get it. You get it. You should be rewarded. It's going to be a relatively powerful gun. And then you have the Lunas Howl. And the the Lunas Howl is the same gun with less range, essentially. And it's more obtainable than ever before, even without paying someone to do it. Because it's just, to me, it's just really easy. I could solo queue and get a Lunas Howl any day of the week. At any point in time of my choosing. I could get the Lunas Howl. So... All I have to do at that point is I just have to put myself in range of my gun versus their not forgotten. And I have almost a 50-50 chance of winning that. I I, I would almost say I have a 50-50 chance because we're both at the same range. No gun is outranging the other. And whatever, maybe the other one has, maybe the not forgotten has a little more handling or a little more stability. I don't know. So, you know, you got to, again, a little RNG, but not as much. So that's fine. Yes, reward the players that are getting up to those ranks in comp and now they're going to come out with a gambit and they're coming out with another pinnacle weapon but uh i think the rng just needs to be dialed back that's how i personally feel i think going forward more people have stopped playing this game because of things they some people don't play comp because it's not fun they can't do anything about it there's a lot of rng they're tired of getting shot you know shot out shotgun by a shotgunner who has a better role and they may never get it some people just don't get the gun they need ever right so that's you know i've kind of talked a lot about that and now we're going to talk a little bit about matchmaking in a comp and I, i've batted this idea around multiple times i've said well I, I think the conclusion that i've come to personally and a few people kind of agree with me uh and it's kind of like a hybrid i think they should just bring solo matchmaking in the comp now solo matchmaking in the comp means that you can load up solo comp in a, in a different matchmaking bracket, and you can't play with teams. It's just like if you were to queue up with Rumble and you had someone on your fire team, it would not allow you to do that. So you could solo queue in comp, and then everyone else that wants to play on a team goes and plays on a team somewhere else. That's it. So, or, and, and someone was saying, someone brought up, hey, well, if it's a team of three, they can never get a solo. No, because if they bring if they bring out solo queue comp and then they br- leave regular comp alone like they the you know what comp is now they leave that in there you could solo queue into group queue it would just like playing it would be like playing a battle royale like Fortnite you play squads but you go out solo and you want to beat every team before you can so it's like the same thing you're not alone on your team but you're solo queuing by yourself so you can play against a team of 3 or a team of 4 and I think that's going to alleviate a lot of a lot of the problems in Destiny 2 as far as players that want to play comp, that are good at comp, but they're tired of the bullshit that comes with it, so they don't play comp. And then they don't play PvE because they don't care to play PvE, so they go play something else. And they don't come back because they don't want to come back. So, you know, that kind of alleviates that. If you just have a matchmaking system where it's just one... If it, it's solo queuing and then you have group matchmaking, groups of one, two, three, or four, right? That way, teams of three can always play together. Solos can play together. You kind of dodge all the nonsense that goes on with recoveries. You got people that are recovering accounts. Now, they're recovering accounts for Not Forgotten's and Luna's Howls. Again, it's harder for the Not Forgotten to get. So people are paying money to get this. Now, if they brought out solo queuing... I don't think everyone that's recovering Not Forgotten's are going to go play solo comp. Some of them are, but again, it's only one person. The people that are trying to efficiently get paid and get the most money for their time 
are still going to be in teams playing team queued comp. So you're really not going to see the problem there. So the only thing you're going to get is, and this can't be fixed by Bungie, it's Bungie, by Bungie, by Bungie, it's a constant that can never change, is you may get people on your team that play worse than you, and the enemy team plays better than you, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's just how it will be, and I had to reconcile that today. I said, man, even if they brought what out what I wanted them to bring out, it's the same thing. I will still have to compete with I may get a bad teammate versus I'm always going to get a good teammate even if they're at the same rank it doesn't matter maybe they got lucky maybe the last 50 games they played the enemy team backed out because the hand of God just chose to let them be nice it doesn't matter right I got to deal with what I got to deal with so but I think that I think that brings up the player base and comp it brings up the game a little bit uh on that side where I kind of feel like it's fallen off. The video is coming to an end guys. We're going to talk more about other Destiny uh, issues on the next videos and just how I feel like the future is pretty scary for Destiny. Please hit the subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment if you got something to add or something you want to talk about. This is Ken Kukin and I will catch you ne next time. Thank you for listening.